Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar which is more informed masonry on bridge analysis with Limit State Ring 4. As always I'm Tom Pritchard, Principal Engineer here at Limit State and today I'm joined by Professor Matthew Gilbert who is the Limit State Ring product originator and also the product manager and he'll be outlining the ways in which Limit State Ring 4 can be used to help you with your masonry on bridge analysis and make more informed decisions. And without giving too much away, I'm sure he'll be using some of the new features that are included in Linux State Ring 4 as part of that. In the webinar, um, there will be time for questions at the end. There should be a Q&A functionality in the interface in front of you. If you want to add questions at any time during the proceedings, we'll try and get round to them at the end. Obviously, um, with it being quite a short time, we don't always have time to get around to all of the questions, but we will follow up by email afterwards. And we will also make a recording of this session available on our YouTube afterwards in the forthcoming days. So I'd like to pass you over now to, to Matthew, who's going to take you through the rest of the webinar. Thanks very much, Tom, and thanks very much uh, to everyone for, for joining us today for the, the webinar. So by way of introduction, first of all, just say a few words about uh, Limit State, the company. Uh, we're here to provide engineers with helpful analysis and design tools that take advantage of uh, particularly optimization technology. Uh, we also strive to make sure the software is robust, well validated, and easy to use. Uh, software uh, products that we offer are, are now used in, in more than 30 countries worldwide. Okay, so a few words about Mason Ratch Bridges. Uh, many of you are aware that there are many of these bridges still in service around, uh, around the world. Um, we think about a million spans worldwide. The vast majority of these are, are more than 100 years old now, and clearly we need to assess these uh, regularly uh, using reliable tools. And this is where Limit State Ring uh, comes in. It's an interactive software tool for the analysis of Mason Ratch Bridges. It's capable of modeling both single and multi-span bridges. Uh, finding a wide range of potential failure modes. Um, particular features um, that are worth uh, pointing out, one, it's the ability to, to uh, basically model localized properties, defects and so forth. So rather than applying a, a large condition factor, um, we can actually enter details of the, uh, the, the particular issues uh, directly. And then another feature is we can model uh, support movements to see, for example, the likely causes of um, existing cracks. In terms of where the software fits in in the sort of bigger picture, um, basically it fits between the, the very simplified tools, uh, for example, the MEXI method for, for masonry match bridge assessment on the one hand, and, and much more advanced tools on the other, so for example, non-linear finite element analysis tools and so forth. The, the hope is that we we replicate much of the ease of use of the of the, of the simple um, tools, but provide a good deal of the power of the the more complex tools. So we can rapidly model a, a wide range of of different geometries, for example, um, and and construction details. In terms of um, fundamentals, um, first thing, going going back right back to to the beginning. Um, 1675, uh, Hook, um, in, in, embedded in a, in a Latin anagram, in fact, um, uh, the following, that um, as stands the flexible uh, cable or hanging chain, so but inverted stands the masonry arch. Basically, what he was saying was that if you if you get all, of, all the blocks that you're going to use to form your masonry arch, you suspend them from uh, a weightless chain or cable, you look at the profile, you flip that profile, and then you can you find that you can fit the profile within the, the thickness of the arch that you're going to build, then your arch will stand. One observation is that this profile, uh, which we typically call the line of thrust, can uh, take up a, a variety of different uh, locations in the masonry arch. It's exactly the indeterminate structure. So there's a, a number of different uh, places where the, the, the line of thrust uh, could reside. However, when we, for example, apply a, uh, a load at, say, a quarter span, and we, and we keep increasing it, we get to a point where we can only just fit that line of thrust within the fitness of the masonry. 
And if we apply any more load, then we get hinges forming, and then we get um, actually uh, at the limit uh, collapse of the structure. So what's that telling us? Um, it's telling us that the shape of the arch in relation to the pattern of loading is important. That governs stability. What I haven't said anything about is the reality of a, of a masonry arch bridge. It's typically got surrounding material, often soil fill material. That provides significant additional capacity. However, one observation is that in order to mobilize um, large lateral or passive um, soil pressures, you need large arch movements. And that latter observation has informed the development of a new limit state uh, that supplements the ultimate limit state called the permissible limit state, which we will we'll cover um, a little bit later in today's uh, webinar. So moving on then to uh, how we go about uh, analyzing masonry arch bridges using uh, limit state rain. Um, first thing, uh, just a few words about the software, what, what's different to limit state ring to other tools. Well, we use a formulation that, that's different. We use optimization to find the, uh, the critical um, failure mode and associated line of thrust. The software was developed uh, in tandem with uh, experimental testing um, uh, programs. Um, so it's validated. And lastly, um, the user interface is designed to allow you to, to use the software basically in one of two ways. The first way is to enter um, the minimum number of parameters relying on default parameters where, where necessary to rapidly estimate the capacity of your bridge. So that kind of is designed to ensure that you can get a solution pretty much as quickly as you would using a, a, a simpler uh, analysis tool. But the second mode is you can then subsequently perform a, a, a more detailed analysis, for example, specifying locally varying properties, and we'll come to that. So first me me mode, uh, quick assessment using the wizard, and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate this in a, in a minute or two. And the second mode, a detailed assessment, for example, we could locally specify um, the locations of mortar loss, and we could see what the effects of that is on the load carrying capacity. So how does the, the software work? Um, basically, we have a vehicle axle sitting on, on the top of our fill. That, that load is dispersed down onto masonry blocks. Those blocks are separated by contacts, which is where the, the interesting things happen. So we can have crushing, sliding, hinging, or combinations thereof. And then at the ultimate limit state, arch movement is restrained by uh, not just the self-weight of the backfill, but also by horizontal backfill pressures uh, via these line elements that you can see mobilized in, in blue uh, on the screen. In terms of the, um, the different elements um, that you'll see when you're using the software, we've got um, basically the output or the outcome from a, an ultimate limit state analysis. We've got the spreading of the live load onto the fill. We've got uh, formation of a hinge mechanism. We've got the, the thrust line, which is actually now a thrust zone, where the thickness of the blue line um, is a function of the compressive strength of the masonry. Um, and also, uh, in certain regions, you can see we've got these backfill elements, which are um, indicated to be, to be on, so in other words, we, 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 we were mobilizing passive soil pressures uh, in, those, in those particular regions. So that's basically uh, what the software um, looks like. In terms of um, the analysis, the original um, version of the software was solely um, designed to model the ultimate limit state. But as I mentioned briefly earlier, um, we've recently uh, introduced permissible limit state, which is defined as the state beyond which long-term load-induced degradation occurs. Because if you're a bridge owner, it's often very, very useful for you 
to uh, have an understanding of how how much load I can routinely apply to a given bridge before I start to limit the, the lifespan, the structure. The permissible limit state is described in more detail in a, a guidance document, Sirius C800, which is also now cross-referenced with uh, uh, National Highways uh, CS454. So in terms of the, uh, the software, the right-hand side of this slide shows you the, uh, the ULS calculation. So we're assuming that we're mobilizing peak passive soil pressures, peak masonry strength. That's basically as before. But now, uh, following Sirius 800, we're now offering a permissible limit state option where we're basically uh, focusing on um, just mobilizing the primary resistance. So that's the self-weight element. Um, mobilizing the masonry strength which we can rely on time and time again and we're basically simply assuming the soil pressures uh, are, are those that will be imparted by a dense fluid so we're not measuring sorry mobilizing any soil strength as such so with that i think i'm gonna actually open up the software and um, start to create a, a bridge model using um, the wizard. Um, you can see when you start limit state ring four, there's this there's, there's the free option, there's the, there's the wizard, which is the same option as, as we had in previous versions, but there's a couple of new options as well now. There's a template option. This is basically still using the wizard, but now with uh, some of the parameters um, defined by the user, and those could be to uh, correspond to, for example, assessment code. There's also a couple of uh, inbuilt um, templates that are shipped with the software. We'll use one of those shortly. And the last option is if we have uh, more complex geometry than we can accommodate using the wizard, we can actually now read in from CAD a, um, a model and do an analysis uh, um, of that, um, that geometry. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the template and I'm going to basically uh, use one of the inbuilt um, um, templates. So this is CS454 stroke C800 with poor road. And we'll, we'll come to what that means in a minute. So first thing in the wizard is I'm asked to uh, enter some details of the bridge. So I can enter, obviously, details about um, who I am, what, what the bridge name is, and so forth. Uh, I can also indicate whether I'm dealing with a highway or a railway bridge um, and, and, and some of the uh, um, consequences uh, 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 of that to manifest themselves, uh, that decision manifests themselves later in the wizard. For now, I'm just going to stick to the highway one. Um, in terms of bridge width, the software is a two-dimensional tool, uh, but we can uh, basically take account of the third dimension by adopting an effective bridge width. And in the latest version of software, there's, there's a bit more um, functionality, if you like, to, 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 to decide how that uh, effective width, width is calculated. But for now, I'm just going to keep it at the default of two and a half meters, just for simplicity. Then move on to the, um, uh, the geometry. Um, in the new version of software, then there's an option to have a, a, an explicitly defined abutment with soil fill behind it. So I'm just going to, for now, um, assume that I have that case. Um, obviously, you, if you have information about the, the abutment, you can enter the particular details. But for now, I'll just stick with the defaults. Then I move on to the, um, the span. I can choose the construction type of the of, of the masonry form in the span, and I can choose the the arch shape. Normally, I would recommend that you use a use a defined shape, um, but for simplicity, I'm going to choose a the segmental one here, um, and I'm just going to, for example, assume that we've got a, a ring thickness of three thirty here. I'm then going to insert a pier to the right of the. Um, the first span, and I'm going to assume, for example, that that pier is four meters high. And actually, I'm going to use one of the new features of the software. I'm going to assume that we've actually got um, offset piers. 
So I'm going to assume, for example, that we have um, an offset of 600, so different spring heights. Um, and I'm going to assume that uh, we also have backing in this region behind this offset peer. And actually, given I've got a high peer, I'm going to perhaps put a few more blocks in that, in that peer. So if I hit next, I can see that that's, that geometry is, is kind of taking shape. Next span by default uses the same uh, parameters as, as the previous one. And then I can uh, define the right abutment if I wish. And I end up then with my full geometry um, as shown. I'm just going to um, change the uh, location of the uh, top of the fill um, to take account of the fact that I've had an offset here. And then I have the full geometry of the structure defined. Okay, then we move on to the partial factors. And now this is one of the um, ramifications of choosing that template because we've actually populated the, um, the partial factors in this tab with the CS454 and C800 um, parameters. And so we've got basically an axial factor a uh, dynamic factor, actually a load effects factor as well. And then we've got um, some parameters defined for the permissible limit state as well. So permissible limit state, we don't use, we don't factor the load. And because the, um, the capacity of the structure can be defined more reliably, we don't need to apply a load effects factor either. But on the other hand, we're, we're scaling back the, um, the masonry properties, as you can see here. If I pick next, I can define the, um, the masonry properties, either all the properties, or I can choose different properties for the different elements. Um, so here we've got a relative conservative value of the strength five. Backfill using standard geotechnical properties. Surface fill I can define. And then next, I can choose, for example, an inbuilt. Um, so I've got inbuilt single axle load from CS four five four. Can choose it. Click finish, and then I can click solve. And um, this is highlighting uh, a, a, another new feature of the software. We've got much more diagnostic information, and I've deliberately. Um, to demonstrate this, uh, I promise, um, not defined a uh, dynamic factor. So it's been flagged up. I can go back straight away to here, define that the axle, axle one has that dynamic factor applied, click OK, solve again, and then basically we get the, uh, um, the generation of a series of, of loads across the bridge, and we get a new feature in, in green version four. We get the um, basically a plot of the adequacy factor against the position. The adequacy factor is a factor on the factor. So basically, if it's bigger than one, it means that the, the loading that you prescribe can be carried safely. You can see here it's just above one. Um, and we can see um, basically what the um, um, sensitivity of the um, adequacy factor is to positions. And I can choose different positions by clicking on the on the graph. I can also, um, for example, um, select um, a series of contacts and, for example, put some water loss on them. So a bit like the example I showed before, if I put in 50 millimeters of mortar loss, then you can see uh, that there. And if I solve again, we can see whether that makes any difference to the, um, the failure. And actually, it doesn't uh, because actually the, uh, the mortar loss um, isn't in, the, in, in a critical region uh, relative to the, um, 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 the, the particular failure mode. So then what I can do is I can move to look at permissible limit state analysis. And now it's just as, as easy to simply select it there and to resolve. And so what we're doing now is basically doing an analysis, but now using those 
partial factors and properties from the permissible limit state. And this particular case, um, it's actually got a very similar adequacy factor of 1.03, but rather than um, having a global failure mode that we had in the case of the ULS, we have uh, a more localized um, mode where we've only got a single span uh, involved. So it's, it's changed the critical position. And then lastly, um, if we wanted to um, look at the effects of support movements, this is now available in this drop down. I actually need to um, um, select a, a block, and actually apply a, uh, a support movement in order to do that. If I choose um, this block to go down by, say, 100 millimeters, and I click solve, and I'm, I'm told now that I need to change the load because it doesn't make any sense to have an automatic um, vehicle applied. And so now I've got basically um, this load of response. And now I can move this load off um, because we don't need now a um, a, a vehicle to, to, to mobilize this, uh, this mode of response. This mode of response is governed by this this, um, this vertical load. It's a really nice way of diagnosing the effects of existing, um, of diagnosing the causes of cracks that you can observe in a, in a given structure. You can also, I haven't got time to look at it now, actually look at how the uh, the load uh, is, is uh, transmitted through the structure when we, we pass a, a vehicle across the, the bridge. Okay, so um, going Back um, to the um, how the software works. I won't go into detail here, but basically we 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 look at equilibrium yield and we solve a simple linear optimization problem to get our solutions. And in terms of verification, this uh, has carried out uh, tests, various institutions, full scale bridge bridge tests, single multi span, and more recently single span in the big fish tank, basically at the University of Salford. Um, in order to see how the soil and the arch interact. And also, most recently, look at how um, a bridge responds and the, and the action of cyclic loads. And that's helped to inform this permissible limit state functionality, which I've just been describing. Very, very quickly, I'll, I'll look at another structure. This is a, a two-span structure from the field. Um, it's a small span bridge. Um, only a couple of meters, two and a half meters spans. If I solve this one, I can again choose to have the bridge loaded automatically. And if I do that, then again, the, the, the load is, is transmitted across the bridge and we find the critical position. Uh, we can see in this case, the adequacy factor is again just above one, so it's safe. But I might, for example, have, um, say, ring separation. So if I have ring separation, for example, in span one, I can see what effect that has on the capacity. See, so that's modeled there. And uh, I can resolve and very, very quickly see how that affects the uh, and the carrying capacity of the structure. And you can see from this that it's going below one when I'm applying um, the um, load above the first span, in indicating that now um, um, the structure is not um, adequate. Okay, going back to the uh, slides, um, just to uh, wrap things up um, in terms of conclusions, um, Limit state ring is a rapid yet powerful analysis tool for masonry bridges. Uh, as you hopefully can see, it can automatically identify many modes of failure, so hinging, sliding, multi ring, so forth. In terms of usage, uh, two modes one using default parameters for a quick assessment, and two uh, taking advantage of detailed knowledge of, of your structure, so taking account of local features for a more informed assessment. And Lastly, uh, the latest version, version four, adds many powerful new features, for example, the limit state mode, uh, but many uh, other features that I haven't had time 
to uh, to cover today. So I think we've now finished the core presentation, so we can now uh, take a look at the questions. So if you have any questions, please uh, add those to the, uh, the chat box. Um, so let's have a look. Um, um, does the software consider only the unsafe theorem and, un and our results either higher or equal to the collapse load? Okay, so I think uh, that's in relation to the fundamental theorems of plasticity. Uh, so basically, you can see you have a line of thrust and the hinge mechanism. So basically, within the definitions of the plastic theories, and assuming that you modeled the locations of the, uh, the contacts uh, correctly, then you basically get the exact solution. If you're uncertain about where those contacts are, then you, you can put in, you can model an arch, for example, with a large number of blocks uh, and, and you get uh, closer and closer to the uh, the true, true collapse load. But the reality is that we're talking about fractions of 1% typically um, when it comes to um, you know the difference between 80 blocks and 800 blocks for example would be would be almost negligible so um, that's the first question um, what is the best way to represent or add longitude or, or transverse cracks on the arch barrel on the model so Transverse cracks, what we can do is we can um, actually you can model those as mortar loss, and then you can see whether or not those, those cracks uh, are mobilized by the action of, of, of vehicle loading. For transverse cracks, then that basically is going to govern the effective width, and there's a lot more um, functionality now than the, there was in previous versions in, in terms of actually uh, introducing those uh, into the software. Um, uh, and the last part of that question is, uh, I'm conscious we've got lots of questions and we're probably not going to have time to cover them all, but the follow-up question, if I add concrete backing over the abutments piers, should I change the backbook and put strength from five newtons per millimeter square to a higher value? Yes, by all means, you could include um, a higher value in that case. Um, um, so, a question um, about are there developments within Ring 4 which are specific to the assessment of tunnels? Um, there are actually some, some developments which make it um, easier to assess tunnels. I think, Tom, it's going to should probably be the subject of another yeah, webinar. Um, yeah, um, unfortunately, uh, um, we'll perhaps pr provide um, a bit more detail to you personally uh, following this webinar um but um uh, perhaps it, it might be something that we, we cover we've well I, I personally have been involved in some, some some work related to um modeling some 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 old uh, masonry tunnels uh close to the alignment of hs2 and uh to help with that we, we, we we've, we've made some um changes to the software uh, and obviously, it's also possible now to to model um, much more complex geometries using the DXF input functionality. Um, um, Tom, um, yeah, well, I think that probably we're just at the end of the webinar now, so I'll wrap up. So I'd like to say thanks to Matthew and to everybody for attending today. We do hope that you found the session useful and informative. And there's a few things to um, do before we finish firstly for those of you that aren't already using limit state ring then do feel free to visit our website which is limitstate.com slash ring uh, where you can find out more about the software and also download a copy that you can use in, in, in trial mode and um, secondly if this webinar has sparked some questions which we haven't answered then please do get in touch with us on info at limitstate.com and we'll be able to reply to you then thirdly we um do have a number of webinars coming up this year 
um, dealing with Linux State Ring and our other products. So do keep an eye out for those. They'll be advertised on our LinkedIn channel, also um, through email and on our website. And then lastly, as mentioned at the start, the recording of this webinar will be made available in the next few days. Um, and you should get a link to that that you can use to either watch it yourself or pass to any interested colleagues. So I'd just like to say thanks once again for everybody for joining us. And we do hope to see you at one of our future webinars. Goodbye.